Business Bites with Invest Northern Ireland. Go further and grow stronger with Invest NI. Visit investni.com slash export to reach your exporting potential. Invest NI. Go further and grow stronger. Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Business Bites. My name is David Tai. I'm the Managing Director of Bauer Media Audio here in Northern Ireland. And each week we delve into the world of business from our part of the world. And we try and unearth some great, good and interesting stories. This week, I'm really pleased to welcome my guest, Daniel McLaughlin, who's the founder and director of Belmont Strategy. Daniel, welcome to Business Bites. Thanks for having me, David. Well, it's great to see you. Let's crack into the conversation. So one of the most interesting stats on Belmont Strategy is that you started this business in April 2020. We've got something in common because that's when I started this job. And what I do know is it was at the very, very, very beginning of the lockdown, which was announced at the end of March. So were you crazy or why did you start a business at that particular time? And what opportunities and challenges did it present? I'm really intrigued. Uh, it, it was a very interesting time, David, as I'm sure you, you know yourself, you were going through change at that period as well. There was a lot of uncertainty that no one could really predict. So I suppose when I started this journey, it was sometime before that stage. So it was a plan that was in motion before the start of April that ultimately came to fruition at, at that point. So if you had told me uh, in advance the context that we would be operating in, maybe I would have changed my mind. But, you know, as, as things have worked out, I'm, I'm pleased that I didn't know what lay ahead. It was certainly a time of uncertainty. It was an interesting time. But luckily enough, we were able to establish relationships with very good clients very quickly. I think there was that initial period, if you remember, where no one really knew what exactly was was happening, what the impacts would be. And I think certainly the, the clients that we're lucky to work with and businesses that you will have spoken to very quickly took stock, got an understanding of, of what was happening and how they had to adapt. And, you know, as, as you know yourself, when it comes to business and private business, you have to keep going. So it was an interesting time to start out. But... In hindsight, and with the benefit of hindsight, I obviously wouldn't change anything. You launched it in April 2020. You're a consultancy business based in Belfast. So we've got quite a few communication style consultancies, public relations uh, businesses around uh, Belfast and our entire part of the world here. What what makes Belmont different? What 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 do you do that perhaps you can't get from other places? So we we operate in a in a very specific niche, David. Um, we provide strategic communications support for the planning, clean energy, and infrastructure sectors. So what does that actually mean? We are often supporting clients on uh, planning applications and proposed development projects, largely in the renewable energy sector. So wind farms, solar farms, uh, battery energy storage projects. And what we will do as a team is support those clients in their interactions, communications and engagements with elected representatives, the public, the media. And our job is to make sure that the facts around these projects are, are clearly communicated uh, with the, to anyone who has an interest in them. So on a, we do work on a project by project basis, but equally we'll be engaged on strategic policy issues. And as well as that, we have a corporate PR offering, but it's all, it all some way, somehow relates back to planning, clean energy and, and infrastructure. So that's our niche. That's the, what we know. Uh, we have an understanding of those processes, uh, of those landscapes in uh, the UK and Ireland. And that's very much uh, uh, what we stick to. And that's our specialism. Very good. And what you see, um, one, people used to say that um, when you see cranes in the skyline and when you see builders' vans flying around everywhere, you know the economy is, is moving forward. Um, similarly, we're in a much more sustainable environment now and there's a lot more talk and business development around that whole area. So looking at life through your lens, how do you see our part of the world at the minute in terms of what you can see from an economic point of view? Are we moving forward in those areas? Uh, yeah, look, as, as everybody's well aware, it, it's, you know, operating in Northern Ireland uh, at times comes with certain frustrations. But I think we've got a really, really ambitious private sector here. We have companies both from Northern Ireland and, and who have, you know, come to get involved in Northern Ireland who are very ambitious for this place. 
and are investing here, uh, creating jobs. And we're very, very pleased to be working with a lot of those companies, David. But you're absolutely right in terms of if you see a crane in the sky, um, if you see a site being developed, that's good news economically. It shows that there's some level of confidence from investors and, and developers. I suppose largely the phase we're involved in is a step before that. So before you see anyone uh, out on site or building a project out, uh, you obviously have to go through the planning and consent process. That does, uh, at the minute, just the way things are set up in Northern Ireland, does create certain challenges and, and frustrations. We would say that that uh, is a you know it's ultimately a fundamental part of creating economic development and uh, investment. So um, if you can get your planning system right to allow these projects to come forward, allow the money to be spent, the jobs to be created, then you're in a very good place. So um, we we enjoy working here. We we live in in Northern Ireland. Our, our families are here. Our, our jobs are here. So we have huge ambition for Northern Ireland. But equally, you know, it's not without its frustrations and challenges. But I think we're coping with a lot of those quite well. Obviously, we got potentially some positive news this week on the protocol. It remains to yeah. be seen just how much support the agreement gets. But certainly, if that was to lead to the reformation of the Northern Ireland executive, that would be great news. I think that local leadership here is important. It's certainly something that uh, our clients and their investors would like to see happening is, is local government uh, at a storm of level back up and, and running. Yeah, just talk, talking about that, obviously, the time of us recording this conversation, the Windsor framework has been announced, although many people won't have seen any detail uh, around it. But the general the general synopsis seems to suggest that uh, many of the uh, perceived issues will have been resolved. So what impact do you think it's going to have for your clients? As I touched on, David, seeing that the Northern Ireland executive back up and running would, would be positive for us and for our clients. If you imagine, um, particularly if you look at the renewable energy sector, for example, which we're very active in, um, and you have international uh, investors who, yes, are looking at Northern Ireland, but they may also be looking uh, at other countries throughout Europe and across the world, uh, and they're looking at the, at the best or most attractive place to invest their money and their resources and their time. So the stability of, of, of our local government obviously feeds into that. Um, if an outworking of, of the Windsor framework is that we see Stormont back up and running, that would be encouraging. We would hope then, as a result of that, we could uh, see some improvements in things like the planning system. If we have a, a minister in place in the Department for Infrastructure uh, driving those changes that are needed in planning, I think that would uh, it would help things on the ground and it would uh, also increase the appeal of, of Northern Ireland from an investment perspective. So hopefully if it, you know, if it, as you mentioned, still in the early stages, I think very detailed documents with a lot to consider. But if it does lead to, to a point where we see agreement and the return of the executive, that would be really positive news. Yeah, we're just coming to the end of our conversation. I just wanted to touch briefly, if we can, on the clean energy sector. So obviously a hugely important sector, a, uh, you know, quickly emerging sector over the last few years. Is Northern Ireland at the races? Are we doing well in this area? Because uh, we've spoken to a lot of people that are, seem to be involved in this area, and it seems like there's a lot of energy, if you'll pardon the pun, in this particular area from our part of the world. Yeah, Northern Ireland uh, has has really performed very, very well when it comes to renewable electricity production. So we've seen in recent years that uh, as a sector here, uh, we have the skills and the ambition to bring forward exciting projects that will, are ultimately helping to decarbonize our electricity supply. And that's obviously important from a climate change perspective, the less reliance we have on fossil fuels, oil and gas, the better. Also, there's a there's an economic benefit to that as well. These projects bring uh, significant investment, job creation, and local benefits. So it's a sector that at Belmont Strategy we're really really proud to be involved in. Um, now that said, we have an ambitious target now whereby um, by 2030, at least 80 percent of the electricity that we consume in our houses and our businesses must come from renewables. 
We're current, currently just below 50%. So we have quite a bit to go in quite a short space of time. So we're, you know, everyone's going to have to work together to get us to that point in 2030. But we have a, a sector that's ready and willing to, to take the projects forward. Well, Daniel, it's been great catching up with you. Thanks for telling us your story. And uh, we'll have to swap birthday cakes every year, considering we were, we're both the same age um, in terms of a business. So um, we wish you and all the, the team at Belmont Strategy the very best into the future. Thanks for being our guest. Thanks very much for having me, David. Business Bites with Invest Northern Ireland. Go further and grow stronger with Invest NI. Visit investni.com slash export to reach your exporting potential. Invest NI. Go further and grow stronger.